In this world, is the destiny of mankind controlled by some transcendental entity or law? Is it like the hand of God hovering above? At least it is true that man has no control, even over his own will. I want to ask you to kill a man for me, my friend. Kill a man? Who? The man who is next in line to the throne, the general of the White Dragons, Count Urius. You're truly a disgrace. Can you really be a child of royalty? Stand up, no resting. A warrior cannot rest on the battlefield. Your Highness, please. Has he not done enough today? Leave us be, Hassan. But... Adonis will have to command the strongest troops in the kingdom, the White Dragon Knights. In addition, the possibility exists that he will marry Lady Charlotte and rule all of Midland. He was born to royalty, and shouldering heavy responsibility is his destiny. As a son of royalty, such a burden is his alone. Get up. Pick up your sword and beat me back at least one time. <laughs> that will be enough for today. You'd better stay warm tonight. We'll train again tomorrow. Master Adonis, come inside. Let me treat your wounds. It has been a great strain on your father. Trying to raise you to be a great warrior all on his own isn't easy. Do not think poorly of him. They say you protected the princess's life with your own body. How brave you are! It is kind of you, but I am no braver than any other. Lord Griffith! Oh, Lord Raven and Lord Owen. We heard about the horrible incident during the hunt. Yes, we almost lost the single greatest asset in Midland's army. My life is unimportant. 
All that matters is that Princess Charlotte is safe. She's even more beautiful. Perhaps she's in love. Your Highness, please excuse my boldness. However, your lessons of late have become very harsh. I understand that your position is a stressful one, but you should be softer on Lord Adonis. He's only a boy. I'm aware of that. I've been facing some difficulties in court as of late. Perhaps I've allowed these irritations to influence my judgment. I beg you, take care of yourself and your son. What the? An intruder! Adonis! Who are you? <laughs> What's, What's happened? What's all this noise? An intruder! A thief in His Highness's chamber! What? It can't be! Oh, dear God! This is impossibly cruel. And after all that, the child will never know the love of his father, even once in this life. What now, Hassan? Find the intruder! Don't let that thief out of the courtyard alive! Sir! Shoot him! A sure. Sound. I hear the sound of swords in battle. Gambino. Yes, 
I gave all I had because I needed your approval. I bet Griffith's enjoying a succulent meal right about now. An evening party hosted by the princess. Imagine the perks. Uh, nothing to worry about but formalities. By the way, does anyone know where Guts is? I haven't seen him since this morning. <laughs> He's probably busy practicing alone as usual. He is just slacking off. Our two companies were supposed to have joint drills today, and he never showed up. He didn't even bother to tell me he wasn't going to be there. No need to get angry. I know. I know how you feel. Uh. Guts! Huh? Guts, where the hell have you been all day long? Thanks to you, we've all gotten in trouble. We're supposed to be working together as a unit. Huh? That looks like an arrow wound. What happened? Griffith, where is he? He's attending the ball thrown by the Lady Charlotte at Primrose Palace. I see. Hey! I'm not through with you! What's wrong with Guts? Griffith. I'm becoming quite tired. Please rest a moment here. Thank you. Wait. Do you intend to see him dressed like that? Please don't embarrass Griffith that way. Wait until the princess is gone and he's alone, if you must speak with him. I'm borrowing this. Hey. To tell the truth, I don't enjoy these festivities. I find them noisy and distracting. Still, they soothe the spirits of those who must fight on the battlefield and allow them to forget the horrors of war for an evening. But I know, their minds never leave the battlefield. It's the end of the war, not distraction, that will save them. Why do most men commit to affairs that result in bloodshed? Isn't that what you asked me during the hunt? Oh, yes. It is true. Men possess a side that is barbarous, as you have observed. But it is a double-edged sword. It can be a tool used for winning precious things as well as protecting them. Precious things? Like friendship and love? For some men, these are the most precious. But I believe that beneath them, there is something even more precious than these. They are driven to pursue it, and they pursue it solely for their own sake, no other. Their dream? 
One man's dream can hold dominion over the entire world. For one who dedicates his life to the forging of a single sword. While many can pursue their dreams in solitude, other dreams are like great storms blowing hundreds, even thousands of dreams apart in their wake. Dreams breathe life into men and can cage them in suffering. Men live and die by their dreams, but long after they've been abandoned, they still smolder deep in men's hearts. Some see nothing more than life and death. They are dead, for they have no dreams. I'm sorry I seem to have gotten carried away. I hope that I haven't bored you, Princess. Oh, not at all. I've never spoken like this to anyone, least of all a gentleman. When I first saw you, I thought you'd be no different from many other member of the aristocracy. You're so young, though you've seen so much. But when you taught me to play on a reed at the hunt, you seemed innocent, like a child. And now... It's as though you were a philosopher, the way you've shared your thoughts with me here. You are amazing. I'm sure your friends are equally as fascinated by you, and that attracts them to you. They are my able soldiers, it's true. They are dedicated comrades who sacrificed themselves for my dream so that it might be real. But that does not make them friends. In my mind, a true friend never relies on another's dream. The man who would be my friend must have his own reason for living beyond me, and he should put his heart and soul into protecting his dream. He should never hesitate to defend it, even against me. For me to call a man my friend, he must be equal to me in all respects. such self-confidence. <sighs> My faith has given me everything I have. And now, I have the honor of speaking to you, the princess of the kingdom. <sighs> Will you share your dream with me? Princess! <sighs> princess, something awful has happened. Whatever is the matter? Your uncle Count Urius has been killed. It can't be. A thief stole into his study and killed the young Lord Adonis as well. We believe he was assassinated. The court is in an uproar. Well, I've heard this upcoming battle may end the war. I certainly hope that is true. No need to worry. Midland's army has a guardian angel watching over it. <gasps> Speak of the devil. Sir, are you setting out? I am, Minister Foss. Now that General Urius is dead, you have become the guardian angel of Midland. I pray for your success on the battlefield, Lord Griffith. I don't know that I'm a guardian angel, but I will do my best on the battlefield. These assassinations disturb me. I am filled with sorrow for both victims, but the young Lord Adonis was only a boy. The brutal murder of an innocent child is surely the act of a demon. No, it was not the act of a demon. Huh? It was the act of a man, I'm afraid. By the way, Sir Griffith, I happen to hear a very odd rumor. An odd rumor? Yes, that the arrow aimed at Lady Charlotte in the hunting field may in fact have been aimed at you. 
At me? I am no one. I'm the leader of a band of knights. According to the rumor, the assassin was not from the Empire of Chuda, but someone here, a member of our very own court. Men are filled with desire, and it darkens some spirits. The court can be bloody, and oftentimes men brew dark plots within it. My goodness. They say that to men like these, it matters little where they kill a man, whether outside of the sanctuary of the court or within it. That is an interesting theory. I will strive to keep any unpleasantness as far outside the court as possible. I swear it. He didn't waver once in conversation. Could it be he didn't do it? No, that's impossible. It would be too favorable an incident for him had it been an accident. <gasps> Could it be? Could he have discovered me? No. No man, no matter how keen he might be, could possibly suspect me. Besides, there is no evidence left. For me to call a man my friend, he must be equal to me in all respects. world, nothing is more changeable than a man's heart. No man can avoid being snared in its web, and no man can suppress his own heart. Man realizes his capacity for joy through his experiences of love and his capacity for ruin. Could it be even ruin holds an irresistible fascination for man?